Hi, it's Joe, and I'm back with another product review, take 10. All my other videos have been about 10, mini 10 minutes, so I'm going to try and cut this down a few minutes. Talk fast here. Um, but it is uh, July in um, Michigan, and so I think we're done with the winter, finally. And so with that being done, I thought I'd take a chance to tell you a little bit about the Fat Boy, uh, which is a fat tire bike. Some people call these snow bikes. Um, but I think the general classification is just fat bike. This is a specialized version of the fat tire bike. Uh, bought this last November. This is a 2015 model year. This would be what I would consider to be the comp level finish. It has an aluminum frame, carbon fiber front fork, aluminum wheels, uh, ground control 4.6 inch wide tires. It has SRAM drivetrain with X7 front and rear derailleur. Uh, and grip shifters. It has a Tektro um, brake system, um, an aluminum seat frame, uh, a seat post rather, and the hinge uh, seat. Um, so I uh, thought I'd kind of cover a couple of things that I liked um, about the bike and maybe a couple of things to consider if you're taking a look at, uh, in particular, the different models that Specialized offers. Um, but then as it relates to you know other bikes that might be out there on the market. I didn't spend a lot of time evaluating other bikes. Um, I'm kind of a specialized fan, so um, I just went right with this. And from there, it was just really kind of the model, uh, the trim level that I was looking for. Last November when I was looking, they were just starting to come out with some of the higher end models, but they really only had this model in the Pro version, uh, which had higher, uh, slightly higher um, end componentry added to it. But that bike generally was the same frame and, and uh, 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 frame and fork as this, so I felt like I could just start with this and upgrade components as need be. At the time, they didn't have a fully carbon frame, so uh, this was about as um, light as a frame that you could get. Um, the, the wheel setup is uh, not tubeless ready. Um, I do have some friends that have been able to convert this setup into a tubeless uh, setup. Our calculations are that the tubes themselves, um, between the two of them, probably weigh a couple of pounds. So uh, for a 34 pound bike, this is an extra large. Um, you can actually take some considerable amount of weight, and that's rolling weight, off the bike by setting this up tubeless. It's a bit of a process, um, but it does work. I'm a heavier rider, and so I'm concerned about um, uh, tire burping. Um, the, the thing about this that they say does not allow it to really be tubeless is that the the, um, the hoop is it does not grab the bead as well as, as some of the other truly tubeless setup wheel sets so that'd be one thing that I would say if you're really going to be hardcore you know and going to go tubeless uh, may want to look into that and, and see once if you've got other friends that might have been successful in converting it it can be done um, but I've also had some friends that have found uh, some burping issues with it um, the grip shifters I was a little bit skeptical of when I first bought the bike. I'm a trigger shifter guy. Uh, my experience with grip shifters has been uh, old, old versions and very poor performance. Uh, not able to twist real easy, not able to find gears real easy. This has worked out really well. I've been really, really happy with it. You know, easy, even as I said with X7 componentry on the derailleurs, uh, which is you know, capable, but you know, not the highest end. Uh, shifting is very easy, very quick, uh, crisp, um, and it's it's um, very easy for me to get into the gears. They of course do this on a fat tire bike um, because a lot of people do ride them in the winter and typically have larger gloves and mittens on, and so the trigger shifters might just be a little bit harder to get to. So uh, it does make sense, but I've, I've been really uh, happy with that setup. The uh, brake setup uh, is is uh, capable. Um, didn't have any problems with it this winter, um, but now that it's spring and summer, I have been ri actually riding this bike um, on trails this summer and have found that the brakes um, maybe are a little bit underpowered. Um, talking with the shop, we're going to try a different brake pad uh, instead of having to replace the whole brake system. Um, going with a um, more robust pad uh, that should work a little better. Um, the other complaint maybe about the brakes would be noise during the winter. Um, they, do, uh, they do squeak quite a bit. Um, in fact, one rider that I know that uh, has this setup uh, compared it to a goose. Uh, so 
they will make some noise and if that annoys you, you may want to consider uh, replacing either the rotor or the pads again and uh, looking at some other options. Um, the ride itself, if you're comparing this to a mountain bike, um, in the snow obviously there's no comparison because this is just monstrous. Uh, the 4.6 inch wide tires are one of the widest tires on the market um, and it's an absolute blast to ride through three or four inches of fresh snow. Um, but the geometry of the bike I found to be pretty comparable to my Epic, um, which when I was uh, looking at this bike, um, was told that Specialized um, worked an awful lot on building the frame geometry, you know, very similar to a 29er. You know, even though the, the stance is wider uh, to get your pedals around the tires, um, the, the geometry, the forward back, um, and, and just kind of the setup on the bike is, is very similar to a 20, 29er uh, mountain bike. It's a little bit more slack, you sit up a little bit more upright um, than you know, a true race mountain bike, uh, which is to be expected, um, but it also provides you know, much more comfort uh, when you're riding, because you're not gonna ride this nearly as fast, typically, as a mountain bike. I will tell you that I've been having an absolute blast with this thing in the, in the summer as well. You know, as I purchased it primarily for a winter bike, living in West Michigan. We get a lot of lake effect snow, uh, and we also have the lake, which uh, is non, you know, it's a, a freshwater lake, so I don't have to worry about salt you know, being blown on the bike. And so I get to ride the beach. I've um, been riding the beach actually in the summer as well, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I've been taking this thing out on trails, which has been an absolute hoot. And that's one thing that I wasn't expecting, you know, is being able to have such fun on this, uh, on trail riding. It's not going to replace my mountain bike by any means. Um, you know, you're definitely working a ton harder on this bike. But just in pure joy and, and, and just having a ton of fun, this thing, you know, rails corners and floats through sand, you know, trouble areas in the, in the trail, um, like, you know, like nothing else. Um, and it's just an absolute riot. It's a lot of work, um, you know, shifting from one side of the bike to the other uh, to navigate turns. You know, obviously there's a fair amount of effort, uh, both in getting it over the, the tire, uh, getting around it and shifting from one side of the tire to the other, uh, but then also just, a, you know, simply being a heavier bike than my mountain bike. But otherwise, uh, this seat, um, like I mentioned, was a hinge. I typically ride the Phenom seat, so this is a slight downgrade from that, but very comfortable. Um, you know, it's a uh, very capable seat as well. No complaints there. Um, and as you can tell, this is a fully rigid um, bike. Uh, the tires I normally ride in the winter, about five to six pounds. This summer when I've been on trails, I've been riding about eight to 10 pounds. Um, you know, and, and, and realistically with uh, lower tire pressure that acts as a, a fair amount of suspension. So it does ride a little bit differently. It rides a little bit more similar to a hardtail, but uh, it does, it is more forgiving than a hardtail on bumps and roots and rocks. So it um, comes with two spots for water bottles um, and, uh, and is a yeah, fully capable machine. So um, if you're looking for a fat tire bike, I would highly recommend taking a look at the Specialized lineup. If you're looking at Specialized in particular, I've liked this model. Again, it gives me an opportunity to get into the sport. It's about a $2,100, $2,200 MSRP. Um, and if I want to upgrade componentry as things need to be replaced, uh, it's a perfect opportunity to do it and essentially end up with a model higher than what I bought. So obviously it comes in a couple of different colors. Orange is my color. I ride it at night and so I want to be seen, but there are a couple of other colors that you can choose from as well. So uh, with that, I hope that's helpful, and I hope to see you out on the trail. If you've got questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. See ya.